We are now within 30 hours of the coupon on Building Your Wealth expiring. Use coupon code PP and get lifetime access to the programs on Building Your Wealth. Big fat margin loan from Elon Musk against Tesla stock again. And what happened with this promotion of a new CEO? After all, yesterday we saw this and rightfully called it out as probably a mistranslation or FUD article. We saw this from Ping West suggesting exclusive Tesla to promote Tesla China president to global CEO. Well, folks, now we have a little bit of the reality and we're going to talk about a cheaper Tesla in this video. So Bloomberg, is reporting what I believe, and it came out many hours after this story, but what I believe is probably the more accurate story. Elon Musk has tapped a longtime Tesla executive in China who oversaw the construction of the Shanghai Gigafactory to help run the new Gigafactory in Texas. That's right. So basically, the person who ramped Shanghai got the best margins out of the Shanghai Gigafactory is being promoted to oversee the ramping of Giga Austin. I actually think this is a very smart move. Even yesterday when we talked about this potential of Elon Musk being replaced as CEO, we didn't really expect that to have much of an impact. Uh, but Tom Zhu, who joined Tesla in 2014 to help build its supercharger network and more recently has been heading the cars, car makers Asia Pacific operations, is in Austin this week and has brought some of his engineering team from China with him to assist in overseeing the ramp of Giga Texas, a U.S. hub for the Model Y and future production of the Cybertruck. This is actually really good. You're getting that Shanghai talent that was so good at ramping there to help ramp the Cybertruck, which we expect to be a complete game changer for Tesla, especially since one of the downsides that I personally have found and many others have found about Teslas is they don't actually have that much storage space. space where with two benches in the Cybertruck, you could actually have up to six seats and the storage of the truck bed, which is phenomenal. Right now, for example, if you take the Model X, which is Tesla's largest vehicle, and you take the seven seat variant, you don't even have enough trunk space to put a beer cooler in the back. Not that you should be taking alcohol in a vehicle anyway, not that I've tried, but it's really frustrating, or I imagine it would be really frustrating if you tried to put a beer cooler in your trunk and you had seven people and somebody had to put the beer cooler on their lap that would probably be pretty terrible uh, and uh, reportedly has happened. Anyway, uh, it, it also makes it very challenging to have a family. For example, we have a Toyota Sienna, uh, which is our utility vehicle. We just took uh, two in-laws, uh, Lauren, myself, and two kids, six people, to the airport, and we drove a Toyota Sienna. Why? Because we can actually fit six people and everyone's luggage. We could never do that in our Model X or Model S. A Cybertruck, though, on the other hand, is a total game changer. Although I'm not 100% sure how many moms are going to be buying the Cybertruck. If you are a mom, and first of all, you're watching this video, shout out to you. And if you are thinking about getting a Cybertruck, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, anyway, this shift of Zoo moving to Austin comes as Tesla has been trying to increase output at the new Texas facility. The U.S. electric vehicle Pioneer originally planned to make Model Y SUVs using its new larger 4680 cells at the Austin plant, which Elon Musk has referred to as a money furnace earlier this year, but instead has pivoted to using flip-flopped to using the old 2170 cells, considering the new batteries are still not yet ready for new production. At this point also, uh, Elon Musk has been uh, not only dealing with a now new investigation into potential animal cruelty over at, uh, uh, or animal rights abuses over at Neuralink, which I potentially think is really just politically motivated. I don't actually expect that there's animal abuse happening. Uh, of course, you know, we'll, we'll see what the government has to say. Uh, and of course, Elon Musk has been pretty well distracted over at uh, Twitter with now pictures circulating of beds and long laundry machines being installed at the corporate headquarters for Twitter in San Francisco, which I'll tell you, California, as much as there is a housing shortage and people are living on the street, they get really pissed off if you end up putting housing inside of commercial units. Take a look at some of these pictures here because... Uh, Let's just say they're somewhat uh, potentially uh, eye-opening. <laughs> uh, although, honestly, I think it's quite uh, quite efficient, dare I say. So take a look at this. Multiple pictures here of sofas being set up. 
uh, sofas here with pillows next to uh, office tables and sort of board tables here would, would, would appear to be. You've got, it uh, looks like they're using Tide detergent and this laundry machine uh, here. If uh, we scroll a little bit further here, we get uh, slippers and former staff saying Elon Musk's room is converted, a converted conference room and looks like a hotel room. Here you've got another one. The BBC has obtained pictures inside Twitter rooms that have been converted into bedrooms for staff to sleep in. The city of San Francisco is investigating as it's a commercial building. Yeah, the city of San Francisco is run by Mayor London Breed. And uh, here's a wardrobe potentially for Elon Musk. And uh, she's the lady that I made a video on uh, back in 2020 when she was saying that she was okay to violate her own mask mandate in her city because she was at a... Um, at a party or a nightclub, and she was, quote, feeling the spirit. You can't make this stuff up. Okay, uh, so in addition to this, uh, Twitter drama and, and this uh, this now good news about uh, a new, uh, the, the Shanghai executive heading on over to Austin, which both Austin and Berlin are having their issues with ramping. Any kind of ramp is going to have problems. Remember, anything you do in life is going to come with problems. There is never a smooth day. And this is okay. I mean, that's life. You put up your shield, it's two steps forward, one step back. As long as you keep trying, and you keep moving, and you don't pay attention to the sludge and scum and swamp beneath your feet, you walk through and you prevail. You move on. You stay the course. As hard as it is, especially in a recessionary environment, it's very, very difficult. It's very easy for people to uh, to, to hate and be envious uh, because uh, recessionary environments are, are rightfully so painful. Uh, but what's this talk now about a potential margin loan against Tesla? Yeah, well, here's just another example of uh, Twitter using Tesla stock as its piggy bank. Twitter right now is reportedly paying an interest rate of about 11.75% on uh, multi-billion dollars of debt. Presently, there are discussions about how to replace potentially $3 billion of unsecured debt at its highest interest rate, that 11.75, and there's talk about potentially Morgan Stanley and other bankers authorizing a margin loan on behalf of Elon Musk against his Tesla stock to refinance this debt at potentially, and this isn't clear, but I'm guessing, at about half of that interest rate. Now, initially, that sounds frustrating for Tesla investors because it's like, hey, this is ridiculous, you know, again, Tesla being used as a piggy bank. Uh, but it actually could be beneficial because if the interest cost halves on this loan over at Twitter, then it's more likely that Twitter will achieve profitability sooner because they're not buried by this sort of excess interest. And the sooner Twitter gets to profitability, the, the faster that Twitter overhang goes away. Uh, so actually the layoffs and this refinancing of debt could actually be something relatively bullish for Tesla stock. Of course, it's always bullish for Twitter investors. They're the ones who made out like bandits in this, in my opinion. Although I still think they overpaid initially. Elon Musk might be able to pull something great off here, and I'm very optimistic that if anyone can do it, it's Rocket Man turned Internet Man. Or was it Internet Man turned Rocket Man turned Internet Man again? Who knows? But, folks, we have to also now talk about what I tweeted about, which has to do with a less expensive Tesla. Cheers to coffee first. Mm. By the way, uh, may I caution you? See that little saucer right there that ha looks like it has soy sauce on it right there? Yeah, that's actually coffee because if you've ever used one of these and you go to pour coffee, they have this little suction cup and when you push on it, it it pops and it spits. Oh, I just spilled again. Uh, it spits coffee on you. I, seriously? It spits coffee. Uh, the dangerous thing is if you pour it onto the coffee mug and then it pops like that, it's not like a tea kettle where it slowly comes out. It just <laughs> oceans out. Not great. Neither is the coffee on my pants now. <sighs> or am I wearing pants? Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about uh, this uh, potentially lower cost uh, Tesla talk. So I find this very interesting. So Troy uh, on, on Twitter here frequently gives us great Tesla data Data here says that Tesla needs a compact car in China. This chart from the article today from the CN 
the China EV Post, talks about how Tesla and BYD's market share in BEVs, battery electric vehicles, uh, is, is actually starting to favor BYD. Now, I added context to this. I wrote, the average price of a luxury auto in China is 200 to 300,000 yuan, renminbis. That's 28,000 to $43,000, like the Model 3 falling in this category. Whereas the average price of a BYD vehicle is closer to 100,000, I put a dollar sign there, I shouldn't have, 100,000 yuan, $14,000. What would a $14,000 Tesla look like? To this, uh, I added a follow-up and wrote, in my opinion, a sub-$25,000 Tesla would feature a 20 to 30 kilowatt hour battery, 83 to 125 mile, mile range. I achieved this by considering solely that a 75 kilowatt hour battery in a Model 3 travels about 314 miles. However, a two-door carrying around a battery that weighs about one-third as much could actually potentially get another maybe 10, 20, 30 percent efficiency because it's a less heavy vehicle. That means potentially a 20 to 30 kilowatt hour battery might actually be able to get you 100 to 150 mile range or just go with an even smaller kilowatt hour battery pack. Go with like a 15 kV pack. Now, some folks hear 15 kilowatt hour battery pack and they're like, that's insane. Why would anybody ever want a battery pack that small? And in America, we have this, this like mentality of bigger is better. Oh, we need all this battery space even though we don't ever use it. Like for longer commutes, I get it. I hate driving my Tesla to the airport and then I come back and the thing is almost dead. When uh, That's the problem I had with my Model X. I drive 50 miles, I park it for a few days, I come back and I have to scramble to find a charger. My new Model uh, S doesn't have this issue because it has a larger battery pack. You know, I could charge this thing up to about 350 miles. I could park it at the airport and the thing's fine. Also, if you turn off sentry mode, oh my gosh, your battery lasts a whole lot longer when it's standing around. Anyway, most of us have this mentality that no, we need more of a battery, but the reality is, and it might be the unpopular opinion, but uh, I'm, I'm the king of unpopular opinions because I like to say things that I believe are true. The reality is, most daily commuters do not need more than 100 miles of range. The national average commute round trip is 53 minutes. It's about 23, 26 and a half minutes in one direction, uh, and, and that would be that would be more than covered, b roughly, by uh, a 100 mile range battery pack more than covered by this and really you could have a standard model 3 interior with a two-door vehicle autopilot as an extra and you could sell a very inexpensive tesla now some people immediately got mad at me and said oh my gosh no we need a four door vehicle look that's what the model 3 is for again the fact of the matter is most people drive a car alone when you consider that potentially and i don't know this statistic i'm going to make this statistic up all right but i would say over 80 percent of vehicles are being driven alone the next probably 15 percent have two people in it and then maybe only just that last like five percent actually has more than two people in it. i'm making that statistic up i do think that would be an interesting statistic to research and if you research it and you comment it down below i will pin you uh you know not like painfully like i will pin your comment anyway uh, so, uh, I think this is very fascinating, and I think there's an opportunity here, a massive opportunity here for Tesla. It makes me very bullish. Now, uh, I do want to remind you that I am ringing the bell to the stock exchange tomorrow at 4 p.m. At 5 p.m., we'll be doing a meetup in New York City on Wall Street right outside. And there's a coupon that expires tomorrow, December 9th, for the programs on Building Your Wealth with lifetime access to those programs. I'll see you there, hopefully soon. Thanks so much. Goodbye.